Hello and welcome to another BFD3 tutorial. In this video I want to take a look at exporting MIDI and audio from BFD3. I'll assume that you're familiar with loading up grooves and presets and so on and we'll just go ahead and take a look at it. I've got a preset loaded here as well as a palette of grooves to help me demonstrate this. So let's first of all take a look at exporting MIDI from BFD3. There's a few different ways of doing this. We can go to the file menu and go to export groove MIDI or export drum track MIDI. Either of those options will open up a dialog box where I can save a MIDI file. I can also go to the groove palette on the right here, right click on any groove and go export MIDI. That will also bring up the same save dialog box. But probably the most convenient way of exporting MIDI is by simple drag and drop. If you're using BFD3 as a plugin inside your DAW, most DAWs will support this and allow you to drag and drop MIDI straight to a track. If I turn off the automatic groove playback and simply play back this MIDI file to BFD3, You'll see that all the MIDI's there that should be and the groove is simply exported very nicely. MIDI is exported according to the currently loaded key map. Every articulation that is triggered is turned into a MIDI note according to the mappings in the key map. Should a particular articulation be used that is not in the current key map you will get a warning dialog box about this. It's worth pointing out that in the preferences under Grooves, under MIDI Audio and Export, we have this MIDI Export Mode option. Currently it's set to one track for all drums and you can see up here that only one MIDI file has been created, one MIDI track. If we change this to one track per drum and then go back, I'll just delete this track and drag and drop the MIDI again, you'll see that instead three MIDI tracks have been created and that is one for each of the kick, snare and a hi-hat. So we've got each of those on a different track which is really convenient. The final option there is one drum track per articulation and that will give you even more drum tracks. For example when you use the hi-hat it'll split the track into open hi-hat, closed hi-hat etc. There are a couple of other preferences in that panel to do with MIDI export. I mentioned earlier that if the current key map does not contain articulations that are used in the groove that is being exported, then a warning dialog will appear because BFD3 ultimately won't know which MIDI note to map to that particular articulation. This preference here will automatically add those articulations to the key map if they're missing during export, saving you the bother of doing it manually. This preference here, export prefers variable articulations, refers to exporting the hi-hat in a variable articulations mode. Normally I'd advise to leave this off unless you have any particular need for having MIDI exports with variable articulation hi-hats. So that's MIDI export from BFT3. Let's take a look at audio export. If we go to the kit page, in the mixer there's an export button. This export panel is key to everything you do when you're exporting audio from BFD3. So we'll take a look at what's in here before doing any actual exporting. It's actually very simple to understand. The export folder allows you to define where on your hard drive any audio exports will be saved to. The file prefix allows you to add a prefix to any file created. So what I've got here is a is a preset called Soul Groove, so I'm just going to type in Soul Groove there. You can choose what bit depth your audio files are exported to, 16, 24 or 32. I'm going to leave that at 16 for now. The export mode here will come to in a minute, also these buttons here. Uh, but down the left here I want to show you we've got a list of all the channels available in the mixer and we can select these to be exported or not as we see fit. So this is where you're able to create multi-channel audio exports. If we select some channels here, 
you'll see in the mixer that the corresponding channel has its record arm button enabled. Now this is more of an export arm. We're not going to be doing any recording in BFD3 itself, but what it shows is that whenever we export any audio from BFD3, these are the channels that are going to be exported. There are some quick arm buttons here which allow us to automatically enable or disable certain groups of channels. All, none, direct microphones only, ambient microphones only, auxiliary channels only, and mix down channels. These include kick and snare, for example, here where we've got the mix down of the three kick microphones all going into one mix down channel. So for this demonstration, I'm going to choose all channels. I'm going to enable my drum track so that we've got something to export. And then we'll take a look at the three different recording modes that we can use. I'll just delete these three MIDI channels. OK, the first mode is free. Free mode will basically begin recording when I hit the export button and it'll stop recording when I hit the export button again. So as soon as I hit export, we can see that it started recording and I can trigger the drum track. And in the background, BFT3 is creating all the files for all of these drum channels independently. So if we stop that playback, stop the recording, and have a look in my Finder desktop folder, we can see that we've got 26 WAV files all created during the export. And we can just throw these in and take a look at them. We can see there that it's created all my drum tracks for me. It's even created mono channels and stereo channels where necessary. Of course, in this case, because I've used free mode and I manually started and stopped the recording, I'm not in any kind of sync with my host project here. So let's delete these and try one of the other modes. In range mode, I can specify a range of the host sync to record for. You can think of it as a punch in, punch out system. I'm going to tell the range mode to start on bar number three and record for four bars. So up here in my timeline, when the playback of the host reaches bar three here, BFD will automatically start recording. And when it reaches bar seven, it will automatically stop recording. So we'll arm the export by pressing the export button. You'll see here that the status is armed. It's not recording yet, and it's not going to record until it hits bar three on the host transport. And we can see here it's still not recording, but as soon as it hits bar three, it starts recording. And it will keep recording until bar seven, when it will automatically stop. There we go. So if we look in Finder, we can see all the WAV files have been created here again. Let's drag those in. And we can see, in fact, if we drop them on bar three, that they line up. Oops. They line up perfectly. Started at bar three, ended at bar seven. And if we take the automatic groove playback off and have a listen. We've got beautiful, lovely multi-track drums. So that's host range mode. Host sync mode is slightly simpler. All that'll happen is when I click export, it'll once again arm BFD3 for export, and that will start as soon as I press the transport in my host DAW. BFD3 will keep recording until the host is stopped. So once again, let's just go and delete all those WAV files we created last time. We'll hit export currently armed and we'll press play here. It's now recording now that the host is playing back and I'll stop it around about here. And you can see that the recording stopped there. So once again we should have a bunch of 
WAV files here that we can drag in. There they are, they're the exact length that I recorded for. Let's turn the drum track playback off. And there we've got multi-channel drums once again. So that covers the export modes in the export panel. And let's go back to the groove editor for a minute. Underneath the tools menu here, there is a secret option. Drag exports audio, not MIDI. Now if this is enabled, dragging and dropping from the palette and in fact from the Groove browser will result in audio being rendered and dragged instead of MIDI. We can see there that it has actually rendered all the channels that we've got record enabled in the MIDI export panel. And it's a fantastically quick way of getting multi-channel audio into your DAW without having to save audio files using that export panel. It's worth mentioning that if you're using BFD in standalone mode, all of these drag and drop functions work exactly as they might do in your DAW host. You can drag to the desktop, you can drag to Explorer on PC or Finder on Mac, and all these functions will work just as they are doing now, except files will be created for you on your hard drive. Let's take a very quick look at the preferences page again, because there's a couple of preferences to do with audio exporting. Again, under the MIDI and audio export tab here in the grooves panel, Export tail lengths. If you're exporting drum tracks, you may want to have tail lengths. This will render a certain number of seconds on the end of your files in order to catch things like cymbal tails that are decaying slowly beyond the last hit and the last place that you exported. If you're trying to export grooves to very precise loops, one or two bar loops say, then you'll definitely want to be putting this down to zero seconds and that will give you exact loop times with no tails whatsoever. The last preference down here, Auto Arm Mixer Channels for Export Audio, dictates what happens if there are no channels armed for export in the export panel. You have a choice here of manual, which will, when you initiate an export and it realizes that nothing has been actually armed for export, will open up the export dialog box and ask you to manually arm something. We've got master, which will automatically arm and export the master channel, so that will give you a two-track drum mix down. And all, which will obviously give you multi-track drums of all current channels. And that covers audio and MIDI export from BFD3. Thanks for joining me.